Hi, I'm Andre. In this quick video, I'm going to show you how to make this flywheel connected to this piston. So let's see how this works. So we have this wheel that rotates and uh, this translates the rotational movement into linear movement. So we can either move this, which will move the piston or move the piston itself like that. And what you see here is uh, actually the constraint that is moving the wheel is actually acting as a motor and turns the wheel and pushes this cube. So let's go ahead and create an actor. I believe in English this is called crankshaft mechanism. Okay, so I'll put a link in the video descriptions for for the models that you need right here so you can follow this more easily. So let's go ahead and create the static meshes that we need for this. So we'll put one for the wheel. Like that. One for the arm. And another one for the piston. Sorry. Should be static mesh here. Like that. Arm. Now let's. We'll create also a base. Because the wheel is going to rotate, it needs a base for it to rotate so so we can use the physics constraint to keep it in place so we'll create another static mesh as the base and this one will use just a cube that we're gonna scale down if you want to make this cube invisible and pass through other objects uh, I'll put in the uh, I'll put a link uh, with the video in in the video description to show you how it's done. So we'll leave this like this. So first let's connect the wheel. So first of all all these objects will simulate physics and just make sure that when you get the objects make sure that they have simple collision enabled like this. If not it won't work to simulate physics. So generate a collision for them. Okay, so we simulate physics. So first let's create a physics constraint for the wheel. Like that. We'll call wheel axis. And we'll parent it to the base. Okay, so here we're going to have the base and the wheel like that. So for that we just need rotational movement in the vertical plane. So we lock this everything like that, except this one, as you see right here. Okay, so I think, and we also have to disable the collision between the two. So I'll do this, check disable, okay. So let's try this out already, like that. Uh, this one, okay. So you can see it already works. Okay, so let's go ahead and connect the arm to this. We'll add another physics constraint. Well, actually, we'll put the f first the piston. So we'll mo make a physics constraint for the piston piston axis like that and so this will actually have um, uh, will have a sliding movement so let's just uh, you know what we'll take that and just create it again because it will put it in the middle of the object so we can move it with the piston 
so physics constrained so we can physics constraint like this uh, piston axis so we take this and the piston which we have not created so we have to create that I forgot about that so piston like that and here put the piston mesh okay so I take this and the piston and move them here okay and actually I have to move them like this also so for the piston axis we'll say the base will parent this to the the base because the base is not, is not moving and the piston like that and here we lock everything except the sliding movement in, in the along the x-axis and that will be this one and so let's try it out like this <coughs> so if you uh, of course we have to go into the piston and simulate physics here okay so if you take this as you can see slides okay now let's go ahead and create the physics constraint for the the arm so we need two of those <coughs> physics constraint one which is it's gonna be arm axis left axis let's say like that and we put here this one and uh, so let's connect it right now so we put the wheel as the first object and then the arm here and for the rotation we just need rotation so we look this and this in the same thing rotation around the y-axis so that should do the trick and we can actually duplicate this so say arm um, right axis like that and we'll move that here now we can do what we can do is take the arm with this and move them here where they should be like that and then adjust readjust the piston here with the piston physics constraint like that <coughs> okay so the left it's already connected wheel and arm and the right should be actually piston and arm so if we disable the collision if we go here we have actually selected the two so search for collision and check disable collision now and also for the arm we simulated physics so this should actually work I think which is this I think we forgot about this okay so this should already work let's see yeah so it does as you can see it moves exactly like the other one and yeah so it works now so this is basically it so now I'm going to explain some stuff about the forces and we'll see how we can uh, command it to move like this. So first, uh, this is moving to perfectly, if I could say that. So let's add some friction in the joints right here. So we'll take the arm uh, constraints and the uh, wheel constraint because they all have the rotational movement and we go here we select twist and swing and for the target velocity we we'll leave it to zero and then we put here something like 0 0.1 so it adds a force that tries to keep them stabilized so you can do that also for the piston axis 
we go here and in the linear motor because this is the linear movement we can check target velocity here and so it's which axis it's on the x-axis so this one and put this to 0 0.1 so if we compile this again now we should see it stabilizing a lot faster so if you look at that one this one is stabilizing a lot faster actually so it actually so the movement is more natural now we what we can do is actually so we can add a motor so this turns like the one we've seen here so how can we do that well we can in the wheel exit here if we go to the angular motor instead of having this we can actually put this to a thousand or something and add here a speed on the y-axis around the y-axis so this like this around the y-axis but we're gonna do that in the construction script because we want to turn that on and off so if you go here at this one we've actually done that so we have options here rotate angular velocity and motor strength so we're gonna add this again so uh, rotate we'll say because it's gonna be a boolean because if we check it it will rotate so angular velocity like that which is gonna be a float and then we have um, strength rotational strength so or mo motor strength actually so this is the force it uses to reach this velocity okay so let's put this let's compile so we have this here we put the force at default of a thousand and this at zero point let's say five so this is actually in uh, rotations per second so this means that it will rotate half of the circle or half of rotation in one second so you can actually translate that in uh, degrees if you want uh, okay so we say here if we we branch and take the rotate so if we rotating then we're gonna have to say for the wheel so for this here the axis of the wheel we're gonna take and we'll say set angular drive parameters like this here so the velocity strength is going to be the motor strength like that we'll also set orientate uh, not velocity drive twist and swing like this so we'll enable twist drive because that's the one we need so because we put here uh sorry it's actually swing yeah so because we put here swing this is actually the one that we need swing not twist okay and again to set angular sorry angular velocity target like that so we plug the angular velocity here so it's actually only around the, so we split this and we connect it to the y axis okay so what we do here is actually go into the wheel axis and check this put the velocity here and the strength here okay so let's try this out so when we create the object like this so if you play this it just settles down okay but if we check this then it starts rotating like that
Okay, so last thing I want to show you is what happens when you change the the mass of the components. So the mass is important because it uh, when the physics constraint act here and here they transmit the force from one object to another so uh, what they do is actually they um, the force that is transmitted is proportional to the uh, mass so let's say if we put let's say the wheel has really low mass you see what happens let's just put this at one kilo So if we hold this like that, uh, you'll see that it actually breaks, it starts breaking down the, the constraint. So actually, if we also put the arm low, something like, yes, it's actually the, the, um, the difference of mass, uh, so if you put the, I said 0 0.001, okay, let's leave it like this. So as you can see, this is what happens. Uh, what happens is that actually the physics constraint kind of breaks down because when it tries to act, it um, the force that it applies, it it's... Uh, scaled by the mass of the object that applies it okay so actually what we've seen here is that the this the arm cannot act upon this piston because the piston has five kilos so it's a lot uh has a lot more mass than this so try to keep a good balance between the masses of the components so the best would be to have kind of the same mass but yeah so the higher the mass it is the stronger is the more stable the constraint is so it won't uh, jitter like that so let's just go back to the wheel let's put 100 here and the arm let's put 5 kilos maybe the wheel less 50 Let's say like this, and this should be okay like that. So if I pull this now, let's see if I pull this. So as you can see, where it jitters, it's here because it doesn't it because the force that I'm pulling with is really strong, it cannot hold it, but it does come back. It just uh, it jit jitters like that. And it does count when you put a higher weight in front of it. So we, this will try to push this like that. So as you can see here, because there's not enough mass, then it kind of starts to break the joint, but it won't break the joint actually. It will just move like that. So yeah, this is kind of it. So um, yeah, the only thing I could show you now is that um, here, because you have a wheel that has this small joint here, the wheel will actually be uh, have its uh, center of mass different than its actual center because there's a small mass here so what you could do if you want it is bring the center of mass in the actual center so for that I'm going to quickly show you here you can get the wheel like that and say get center of mass and this will actually give you the center of mass in the world coordinates so I'll actually say we'll set the center of mass like that and because the center of mass can only be set 
So we'll do this in the event begin play because it, it can all be set by an offset from the uh, center of mass calculated. Then we can translate this into the local coordinates of the wheel, which will actually give us the offset and will negate that offset. And then what the, uh, the center of mass will come to the center of the object. So to the to its pivot actually. So we'll get the wheel world transform, which means the component world. So we'll actually need the inverse inverse transform location. So we'll take the center of mass from the world, we'll translate it to local to the wheel, and then we'll simply negate it. Then it gives us the difference, the offset that we'll just plug in here. So now maybe you don't see the difference. Well, here we just have to deactivate this actually. But there is a small difference in actually how the wheel would settle. It should settle more naturally. Yes. So that's it. If you like this video, please do um, comment and uh, give us a like. And don't forget to subscribe.